Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to another Knit Rohi podcast episode. Yay! I know it's been a really long time since I last recorded, but if you're new here, my name is Arohi. I run the Knit Rohi podcast and here we mostly talk about everything knitting, sometimes crochet and sometimes sewing as well. Glad to have you here. And since it's been a really long time since I last recorded, I actually tried recording this video twice before. I recorded it just fine, and then I just could not edit it. Like, I just sat on my phone for like a week, two weeks, and then by the time I finally got to it, everything I said in the video was just outdated. So I just didn't feel like posting it. So it's a promise to myself that I'm recording it today, Sunday, August, I don't, 6th? Sure. and I will get this video out hopefully by tonight that is a promise I am making to myself that I probably will not be able to keep so let's see let's see what happens but yeah today since it's been a long time since I last actually spoke to you guys I think the last time I posted a video was in April which was a completely different season yeah I just wanted to talk about like all the things I've knit this summer since summer's like almost wrapping up honestly that's kind of sad i love i love the heat you know i love like wearing tank tops and shorts and but i'm still like very excited for the fall as well but either way i wanted to talk about everything that i've knit this summer and some projects that i'm looking forward to knit in august and september so yeah we can get started the first one that i'm really excited to show you guys is what i'm wearing right now so this is the Reno Top, which is a crochet pattern actually by Paul Estrick or Suzanne Mueller. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is a crochet top and I generally knit, but I only crochet like maybe one project a year since it takes more of a toll on my wrist, but I really enjoyed making this top. So this top is crocheted on a three millimeter hook throughout and then the edgings are done with a 2.5 millimeter hook. So they're really small hooks guys but this top actually is like mostly worked out in double crochet so it actually didn't take me that long to um crochet up the one thing that did take me some time though is that you crochet the front and then you crochet the back and then you seam the two sides together that actually took me a really long time to get to because i crocheted everything and i just kind of wanted to you know do something mindless i didn't want to sit and figure out a mattress stitch even though like after I did it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But anyways, this top really didn't take me that long, which was really surprising. And I love the fit of it. It's such a beautiful top. It's uh, very bra friendly, as you can see. And uh, right now the suggested length in the pattern is fairly cropped and generally I wear pretty cropped clothing. So that worked great for me. And what I really like about the pattern is that it has um, decreases along the side. So it doesn't like flare out towards your waist, which is very nice. It's very uh, figure flattering. Um, since it's a crochet pattern, I think um, it's actually pretty, um, the, the drape is very solid. Like it's not as flowy as a knitted top. I'm not really sure what the best way to describe this would be. And I actually really like how that looks. Um, the yarn I used is Hand Spun Hope Ethiopian Cotton in the color Mimosa Legume. And I still struggle with saying the word legume. legume. Sounds really weird. Is it just me? But anyways, that's, that's the yarn that I used. I used almost entirely two skeins of that yarn. So it was a perfect yarn, perfect top, everything. Um, I actually wore this top like every other day after I finished making it. And um, since it's 100% cotton, the top did stretch out with wear. It grew out like a decent amount, like stretched out almost a whole size, which it didn't really matter to me, it just changed the fit slightly. But I decided that the top was getting kind of grimy since I was wearing it a lot. So yesterday I kind of, as an experiment, like put it in a laundry bag and uh, threw it in the wash with the rest of my clothes. And it seemed to have shrunk down to its, its initial size, which actually works out pretty great. So now I figured out that one, I could throw this top in the washing machine, but like lay it flat, flat to dry. I don't want to put it in the dryer or anything. And two, if it gets like too baggy, I can just throw it in the wash and everything will work out great. Excellent. So yeah, I really like this top. I kind of want to make it in like three more other colors, but that will probably have to wait till maybe next May when I want to think about 
on my tops again. But yeah, that's the first thing that I made. The next top that I wanted to talk to you about is something of my own creation. This is the tangent top. I made this top about a um, couple months ago and I wanted particular like the vision for this top essentially was I wanted a top that I could wear with like baggy pants so I wanted it to be like tight fitting and cropped just since like a lot of my baggy pants are high waisted as well so I think this top did a really good job though you know like I used a knit picks gloss fingering which is a merino and silk blend. I forget the percentages, but I think it's a 70% merino and 30% silk. So for days like this, where it's like 85, 86 degrees outside, it's really warm today. I probably wouldn't wear this top, but I think it's like excellent for transitional weather. So the weather that we were getting in like June perhaps, or like the weather we'd get in September, I think would be excellent for this kind of top. But let's talk about some details in this top actually. So this top is knit entirely on 3mm needles and it features a twisted rib that starts on the neckline and then continues down the shoulder. I don't know if you can see this. And then the twisted rib splits into two and continues down the armhole. Uh, once the armhole is done, the twisted rib meets under the arm, oops, under the armhole and then goes all the way down to the hem. Yeah, and the hem is finished with twisted rib as well. Um, all edges, like the neck and the body hem, are finished with, or we, you, you use an Italian cast on an Italian bind off, so it looks very neat. And the armholes are finished with a really thin band of double knitting. Yeah, and I really like how this came out actually. You probably see me wear it more often, again, like I said, when it cools down since really warm and it's like a pretty high neck as well so I'm like it's, I'm sweating a lot in it plus it's got wool content as well so it's really probably not appropriate for like high 80s weather but once it like cools down slightly and I want to wear it with pants again and I actually want to wear pants again I will probably wear this top a ton. Um, currently the pattern is in testing already and the testing period is actually almost over so hopefully I will put this pattern out Sometime in the middle of August, hopefully if there aren't too many edits I need to do after the testing process. But if you follow me on my Instagram, I actually, whenever my, my testers finish uh, like their tea or and post a picture of it, like I'm so eager to share it and I've shared a bunch of pictures of those who have finished already and everyone's top looks so cute and everyone has like a, their own separate vision on what they want to do with their tops. Some of their tops are light, which looks so good. I kind of want to make like a light version of this top too. Some folks decided to um, do, use a variegated yarn. I love how everything looks, it's so beautiful. But yeah, I, hopefully I will get this pattern out if you are interested in it. But yeah, let me know if you have any more questions about this top, I'm super excited about it. This is my second pattern that I would be releasing with hopefully more to come in the future. Yeah, last look at my tangent top. Oh, I did. Forgot, forget to mention actually that this tank, my version at least, is very cropped. Like I think from the armhole to the bottom of the hem is like eight, eight and a half inches, which is kind of like a standard size for me, but like I've realized that it's like pretty cropped in general. But of course the pattern like lets you know that you can knit it longer or if you want to like change the frequency of the body decrease, it kind of walks you through that just to have like your perfect fit. But yeah, this is what my sample looks like and this is how I really like it. I might create a longer version in the future so I can like tuck it into pants and stuff, but we will see. We will see down the road if that's in my future. That's my second finished object this summer. My third finished object this summer is also one of my own creations. So I actually haven't given it a name yet, but it is also black. This is the unnamed T. I think currently I am calling it the unnamed bottom-up tee since surprise surprise it's knit bottom-up so the story behind this is that after knitting my mom's batty tee which um i actually i don't think i've shared a picture of it on instagram or even here actually 
I will do that soon because she looks my mom looks really good in the baddie tea but anyways we're not talking about that right now um I finished knitting my mom's baddie tea on two two and a half millimeter needles that sounds about right and it was a really long project it was like it took me more than two months and then I was working on the tangent top at the same time too and that was on three millimeter needles and I was just really tired of these small needles you know and I, I wanted a super quick super simple kind of brainless you put like two rectangles together and create a top kind of kind of top you know so I decided to knit my own pattern really and about at the same time I was going on vacation and I wanted a something really mindless to knit on on the plane and my boyfriend and I we went to Germany actually so the plane from here takes around six seven hours seven hours I want to say so something like really brands that don't have to think about too much and I don't have to like manage you know like I don't want to have to like have to manage like five I don't know four or five pieces connected by cord while I'm sitting in my smush little plane seat you, you guys know what I'm talking about right so I decided that this tee will be bottom up since I did not have any current whoops in, at that time I decided to cast this on super super simple long tail cast on did not want to have to deal with the Italian cast on or anything for like I don't know 190 something body stitches um, so yeah, I just decided to long tail cast on and go from there. So the body is knit bottom up like I said, and it starts off with a 2x2 two two rib. Then it just knit literally straight up to the underarms and then classically like split, you split the front and the back. Um, and at this point I realized that like the idea was to create, you know, a super simple two rectangles sewn together kind of vibe. But then I decided I wanted to be more complicated and add some shaping. So I decided to add some armhole shaping up, like after splitting the front and the back. And then I knit the back completely, added some short rows for the shoulders on each side. And then uh, knit the front, got to the neck neckline, uh, put some stitches on holes, finished the neck, and then joined the back and the front on either side using a three needle bind off. Um, and then once that was done, I picked up stitches for the armholes and finished those off with the 2x2 two two rib on either side. And then same thing for the uh, for the neck. I picked up stitches and then finished it off with a 2x2 two two rib. Super simple. It took me about like two weeks, honestly. This was knit on 4mm needles, so a lot bigger than the 2.5-3mm needles that I was working with previously. Um, oh, the yarn that I used. So I wanted to try like a pretty new to me uh, summer yarn and I came across a yarn called Cascade Hampton. So this yarn is a cotton and linen blend. Again, I'm forgetting the percentages. I think it is also 70% cotton and 30% linen, but it's a really nice fabric. It's very lightweight. It kind of reminds me of um, Santana's Garnelina or Drops Bell if you guys have ever used those. Um, but with a more solid kind of color and like this didn't bother me since like this I literally just wanted a plain black tee but yeah that's what I use it the it works up really well on four millimeter needles and it's very soft actually it's very very nice um, but yeah I think it fits me so so well I did post a picture of this one actually on my Instagram so that might be a great place to check it out if you're curious to see what it looks like on me but yeah, I love this. Currently, I don't think I want to write up a pattern just yet because I actually, I don't have any notes for this so far. I, even though it's super simple, like I know, I just need to know the number of um, stitches I cast on and then everything else I can kind of just like count, you know? Um, so it should be really simple to write up a pattern, but since, again, like I said, we're kind of wrapping up summer already, folks are already talking about their fall knits, I personally will be talking about my fall knits like in a few minutes um, and then I, I don't know if I want to go through like the testing process again and then put out a pattern in like maybe end of September by the time like it, no one's thinking about tees anymore uh, that's one of the reasons I don't want to and then another reason is that the pattern itself is super super basic I think besides the short row shaping there's really nothing to the pattern so I'm not sure if folks would be interested in such a simple pattern 
if you've ever knit like a bottom up sweater or anything bottom up before like that's like 80 percent of the pattern you know so yeah i'm not really sure if like folks are interested in the pattern for this but if you are let me know and maybe we'll, we can get something set up for next summer i do actually have an idea for next summer as well i, I want to make the same tee but in white with blue stripes i do have some leftover san miscon lena from my very first square tee that's just been sitting in my stash and i don't really know what to do with it so i think it will look actually really nice on a um on a white tee with just like some oops some stripes going down the base and up to the underarms maybe i'm not sure maybe i'll draw it out and see but that will probably have to wait until next summer as well i don't have the yarn or the time for that currently but yeah super excited for it for next summer hopefully it works out but yeah that is my last finished object this summer and some i am actually working on one last summer project before the season wraps up where is it so i decided that actually this was before yeah this was before we went on our trip to germany i had just finished the tangent top and i it was like at the middle of summer at that point it was like july and all the yarn that i had in my stash was all all everything for sweaters and i just it's july it's like 90 degrees and i just did not want to think about sweaters so i decided to get some uh summer yarns as well so i got a combination of um some fingering weight cotton that i'll show you in a second i picked up the um cascade hampton that i used for my bottom up tee that i just showed you guys and a few other things that i haven't quite used just yet but um i decided that once the tee was done i wanted to make just one more project and the last yarn that i picked up was cascade cotton socks in the color ecru so this is basically it's white off white just white honestly and I am making the twist loop top by other loops. So this top actually looks really small right now, but it's ribbing and I'm sure it will grow. And especially since it's cotton, I don't expect it to have a lot of memory. So I'm okay actually if the uh, top grows out. And Remembering what I did with my crochet top, if it grows out too much, I can probably just pop it in the wash and it will probably, hopefully, uh, shrink down again. But either way, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm knitting the twist loop top uh, in Cascade Cotton Socks. And Cascade Cotton Socks is 89% cotton and 11% nylon. I'm just not very good with like percentages today i think i just all these numbers seem weird but anyways the pattern recommends a wool yarn i think like something with wool content like knitting for olive merino or something like that uh last summer i knit the camisole number five by my favorite things knitwear in uh knitting for olive merino and i i love that top but i think it does get slight slightly too warm uh, similar to my tangent top, you know, like I can't I just can't wear it in like the high 80s Like it's just very not practical It is very nice to wear like once it gets back into the 70s and I can wear it with jeans and that looks really nice But I just wanted some something sleeveless that I could wear like in the depths of summer like what we're facing right now So I think this top would be really good for it since it doesn't have any merino or any kind of wool content but on the other hand since it's all cotton I'm not really sure how like how the stretchiness would work out but we will see we will see as time goes on so far i think the nylon content actually is helping with the bounce and it doesn't feel like too warm or anything which i think it's really nice so far but yeah similar to the camisole number five if you guys are familiar with that construction uh it starts from the top you knit the fronts and then you knit the backs and then you knit or sorry you knit the fronts and then you knit the rest of the front you pick up stitches for the back, knit the back, and then you join the round and go all the way down. Uh, this top is knit very similarly, but it has the additional cool factor of having this really interesting cable pattern down the front. So there's three repeats of the cable pattern, and I have finished two of them. Surprisingly, I am still on my first skein of this yarn. So 
and I, I have one more left so hopefully I can just get add like a lot of length to the body for this one but we will see we'll see as we go on my plan is to finish off the first skein and then with the second one finish off the neck and the armhole the neck is simply a one by one rib I believe and that's double folded and the armhole is finished with three or four stitch i-card bind off i'll have to check i was kind of surprised that it wasn't double knitting but i think the i-card bind off looks really nice too um i've made one big modification to this top actually so a lot of pictures that i see of this top are like fairly narrow and skinny women and i am not narrow or skinny so i don't actually think that like a top that like where the the shoulders that are so close to the neck and then grow out exposing like a lot of shoulder on each side would look as flattering on me since it'll probably like I don't know I, I think it'll sh like exaggerate broad shoulders which I didn't really want so I actually saw like a cool modification that someone did on Ravelry about adding one more um, rib yeah, like knit three, purl two on the shoulder and then adjust for that like with the increases or the underarm. So that's exactly what I did. So the pattern calls for, so if you can see over here, I cast on with like these many stitches, but the pattern actually does not have this middle repeat. So I actually think this will make it one, more bra friendly, two, hopefully wider, and three, like a little more flattering on me. So we will see once I add the neck and the arm if that is true. Um, yeah, so I think that's the only modification I've made so far. Oh yeah, and to adjust for the extra stitches on each side, I just cast on fewer stitches on the underarm and it gives me the same uh, body stitch count as I was supposed to get if I had started off with like fewer stitches and then done the same amount of increases. So I think that worked out pretty well. Yeah, I'm very excited to finish this and hopefully, hopefully maybe get a chance to wear it before it starts cooling down again. But if not, no worries at all. One thing I'm a little concerned about is the color of this top. So, um, I do wear some white, but I'm not sure if the white is like too stark of a contrast from the color of my skin. So I'm not sure how flattering it would be. Um, I was kind of going back and forth on this actually, but eventually I decided that like I'm just going to make the top and if I really don't like it after a few wears, I could just try dyeing it a different color. And absolute worst case, like I love black, I wear black all the time, I can just dye this black. I'm okay with having an all black wardrobe. So yeah, we'll see if the white is just really not vibing with me, we'll, we'll go with black. It's fine. I think that's all I will have to say about this. Hopefully, I'm, I keep knitting on it, waiting for this uh, one skein to wrap up, but it's like, it's like a never ending skein. It just keeps going. I just keep adding like, like centimeters and centimeters to the body and it just never finishes. This is like the opposite of yarn chicken, yarn anti-chicken, I, I don't know. Um, anyways, so hopefully I, I can finish this the next time I show you guys, I will have the neck and the armholes done. Yeah, that is all the summer things I have. Um, that, my uh, twist loop top, is the last summer thing I wanted to knit on. And then I wanted to get started on some fall, or like early fall knits, really. Um, in the spring, I realized that my wardrobe kind of transitioned from sweaters with like a higher neck to just the mic square tee and stuff which was like fairly linen-y and like very loosey-goosey and I didn't actually have like a great knitted wardrobe for like 60-ish yeah 60 degree weather my sweaters were a little too warm and my tees were just like too cold at that point so one thing that I really craved for was like or were v-neck sweaters which i just didn't have any in my wardrobe really or like lightweight v-neck sweaters so i saw recently that amy Sher makes released a slightly sassy v-neck pattern and that seemed to like check off all the boxes that was also like a very nice very cute v-neck um it has a long sleeve or i think the um pattern description says three-fourth sleeves but like 
it's very simple to make them full sleeves as well um so that's that's one sweater that i really have my eye on and it's knit on or the pattern recommends uh three and a half millimeter needles so it's not as small as three millimeter needles but like still it's small enough gauge so i was like this is this is cool and i think i might have the right yarn for it so um this is some yarn that i've had in my stash this is knit picks high desert sport in the color lava fields yeah lava fields so this is a sport weight um wool basically and it's really really nice to to the touch like i honestly thought it was merino i don't think it's merino i think it's just it's 100 percent usa grown shaniko wool i'm not sure what that is but that's probably not merino is it um and yeah this is sport weight and it runs 298 yards per 100 grams and i have three no i have four balls of these so i think it's like actually a perfect amount of yarn for a v-neck uh sweater that's knit on like three and a half millimeter needles so i'll have to just swatch for the slightly sassy v-neck with this yarn and if i get gauged like i'm definitely making that like a v-neck black sweater that i can wear in 60 degree weather like it sounds like so up my alley so yeah that is my first plan that i want to make this fall like in august september the second one that i want to knit in this fall is with quince and co chickadee in the color oh rook um it's this like dark brown almost black sort of color i really like it um if you remember my first podcast actually yeah i think it's my first one i was considering using this yarn for maxi's mock neck pattern however ever since then i did uh swatch for that and i just i was so so off from gauge i it was so off like i don't even think like generally when i'm off gauge I just kind of fudge it and like work with it but i was just like more than 10 stitches off at this point it was just not happening so i decided so this went back into my stash and i actually think looking at the yarn it's actually on the heavier side of sport i think actually i don't know if that's super obvious you have to take my word for it i suppose but yeah this is on the heavier side of sport so i think that maybe i could use it for the lanark sweater by the crea bea so i this sweater when it came out i i was i was like this is genius this is fisherman's rib with a quarter zip this is this is beautiful and this yarn is really soft like this is is this merino No, this is also not marine. This is also 100% American wool. I guess we're having a very, very American August and September. But anyways, um, so I have 10 skeins of this and I think that is more than enough yarn for um, Fisherman's Rib. Yeah, half Fisherman's Rib? Fisherman's Rib, one of them. Um, quarter zip sweater. So yeah, I'm really excited to swatch this up. Hopefully I get gauged this time around. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, I think that that'll be beautiful to wear. And I'm since this yarn is so soft, I plan on wearing it next to skin. And since it's a quarter zip, I can just like unzip it and then have kind of like a v-neck, but a cooler kind of v-neck. So yeah, this is also something that I'm really excited to make this fall. The last thing I want to make this fall is something that I want to make for my birthday actually. So my birthday falls at the end of September and I wanted to make something like special that I could wear to maybe dinner, like a fancy dinner that night maybe. So I picked up, um, so last year, last last August, September actually, um, my boyfriend and I were in uh, London and like other parts of Europe as well, but primarily like for the, we spent two weeks in London. So while we were there, I wanted to try some local, like I wanted to hit up the yarn stores in London and then try out some local dyers. And one dyer that I really had my eye on was Sakami Yarns. So I bought three skeins of this yarn in the color Donate a Smile. So this is 
100% merino. Merino. I was right this time. And it's 437 yards for 100 grams. So like a fairly standard um, fingering weight hand dyed yarn. And it's like this like mauve kind of color, which is really beautiful. And I remember like back then, like a year ago, I was really into this color. I still, I still think it's like beautiful, but I think right now I'm like more into blacks, as you can probably see from what I've shown you guys today. But anyways, um, so this is something that I had picked up. I actually had it shipped from um, Edinburgh, somewhere in Scotland, I think, um, where they dye it to London, since like we weren't gonna go up uh, north. But um, yeah, the yarn came. I was it. I was so shocked about how beautiful it was, and I figured that okay. I kind of want to hold it together with something to make a like really nice sweater so I decided I don't generally knit with mohair but my boyfriend and I we decided to like go around the city and one of the days we ended up in beautiful knitters which is a yarn store in London and it was I, I actually don't go to like yarn stores in person I've been to probably a handful so this was one of my first times in like an actual physical yarn store and I was just so excited to like touch all the yarns. It was it was amazing. Um, and I did want I, I did I walked in not planning on buying anything, but the ladies there were so nice. Everything was so beautiful, and I was like, okay, I, I need to buy something. You guys probably know. You guys you guys know what I'm talking about. So um, I actually came across their own mohair, like the beautiful knitters mohair, and. Unlike a lot of mohairs that I've touched in the past, which like I knit it up and it just feels like kind of awful against my skin, I picked up their mohair and it was, it's so soft. Like I, I, I can't tell, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't know what kind of magic mohair this is, but it just does not bother me. I actually knit up a swatch for another pattern that I was considering uh, with this yarn, with holding one strand of uh, the Sakami and one strand of the mohair together. The fabric is like really nice and even then the mohair just does not itch me at all. It's like insane. I, I don't know what's happening. Um, but I decided to kind of play it safe and I figured that like, okay, I don't know if I want like a full, fully closed off like a high neck sweater with it since like, what if I get itchy, you know? And like this yarn, both of these yarns, like they're from the UK and they're like kind of special to me. So there's it's just kind of been like sitting in my closet for the past year and I'm not really sh I wasn't sure I keep changing my mind about what project I want to make with them but I recently saw a Egonet post or it's not recently it was like a while ago actually um create a pattern called the stone kimono so if you guys haven't seen it before it's like it's not a full cardigan it kind of stops like halfway but it's knit like entirely flat I think and it's like long on the body and then short on the sleeves and you can kind of just like throw it on top of like uh, like a top in jeans or a dress or anything and I think it looks like actually kind of cool um, the yarn that that pattern calls for is very different I think it's a combination of like a lace weight and a mohair and another lace weight I'm not actually sure but here's where fudging comes through again and I think I can make do if I hold these two together we will see I actually have not swatched for that too but I think if holding these two yarns together I think I have enough for like a decently lengthy salem kimono and since my birthday is at the end of September it does get to that weather where it's like not too hot but not too cold either so I think like throwing it on top of like a like sleeveless top and jeans or something just like a, a or like a black sleeveless top and black jeans with like you know this mauve colored kimono on top as like a statement piece would look so pretty and I also actually have a purse in the same color. So just all that together, I think would look so cute. I very much plan on being stopped on the streets by paparazzi and be like, oh my God, what are you wearing? But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, that's what I have planned for these guys. And since I want it done by my birthday, I will probably cast it on maybe like end of August, hopefully. So I have it done in time. Yeah. Those are the three projects that I'm currently thinking about for August and September. I think, fingers crossed, that I will stick with them just for like these two months because like, like I said, they're like fairly lightweight and like pretty v-neck or like in some ways like not fully a sweater or not like a thick sweater that we generally think about. So I think it will be great for like the upcoming like temperate weather that we're going to hopefully get. 
so yeah i think it'll be perfect for i'm really excited about it i'm really excited to start these knits as well um in general i think i do enjoy summer knits a lot like i know a lot of people talk about like knitting with cotton or silk is not very pleasant but i've generally not had a problem with it like i enjoy like um knitting with cotton i actually enjoy crocheting with cotton even more it turns out um and this cotton linen blend that i made my bottom up uh what is it called well, unnamed bottom up tea i guess we're going with that for now that yarn was so so easy to knit up uh and even the uh cascade cotton socks that i'm making that i'm making my uh twist loop top with it's so easy to knit with i've never had a problem with the i haven't had a problem this summer with any summer yarns so yeah but i think i'm very excited to start using like some random yarns for my stash just for like the projects that i have it saved for because most of the projects that i have saved for for the yarn that i have in my stash are for like sweaters you know so yeah i'm really excited to use all of that and hopefully show you guys hopefully not two months later hopefully in a couple weeks and i am holding myself to that with that i will leave you guys and yeah thanks for watching i hope to see you guys in a couple weeks bye everyone